Funding for the production of Folks is provided in part by the Friends of LPB. PFG. Someone once described the blues as a state of mind and a music that gives a voice to it. Hello everyone, I'm Rob Hinton. And I'm Genevieve Stewart. Today we have a musical treat for you. We'll be talking about and listening to the blues, a musical form that expresses sadness but can make you want to dance as well. We'll also be featuring some jazz music, sometimes referred to as this country's only original artistic contribution to the culture of the world. Blues, jazz, and a whole lot more today on Folks. Everybody says folks, just plain old folks. Everybody just people all over the world. Oh, folks to live, folks got to give, folks got to care, ooh, folks got to share. When you talk about the blues, singers like Billie Holiday, Bessie Smith, and Ma Rainey come to mind. It's a form of music that oftentimes expresses a mood of sadness. The early blues dealt with many subjects, for example, infidelity, bad luck, murder, and loneliness. Since the 1920s, great blues traditions have developed all around the Baton Rouge area. And on Sunday, April 24th, Baton Rouge will get an opportunity to celebrate its blues tradition at the third annual River City Blues Festival in the grounds of the old state capitol in downtown Baton Rouge. Now, the event is free and will take place from 1 to 7 p.m. One of the groups playing at the festival will be Henry Gray and the Cats. And today, we would like to share with you the piano and vocal blues style of Henry Gray.
Another of the bluesmen in this year's Blues Festival will be Silas Hogan. Hogan comes from a musical family. His father was a musician, and two of his uncles were early blues men. Now let's listen to the sounds of Silas Hogan. I got roaches in my kitchen. We now shift our attention to jazz. Its birthplace, of course, is New Orleans. Now, jazz is a musical form consisting mainly of West African rhythms, European harmonic structures, and American folk melodies. It's not black music, per se, but the cultural environment in which jazz originated and developed was, for the most part, in the black community. Now, for a better understanding of jazz, here's Genevieve with jazz musician Alvin Batiste, director of the Jazz Institute at Southern University. Genevieve. Thank you very much, Rob. Very glad to have you here with us, Alvin, today. It's my pleasure, Genevieve. You know, as we watched Silas Hogan and Henry Gray play here for us today, and looking at the age of these men, I think all of us appreciated the fact that we had them in here today. Am I right in saying that the type of blues men that they are are a dying breed, and if so, who's coming up to take their place? Well, it would seem that they are a dying breed because in the United States, that type of music is not marketed intensively, but actually there are people who are picking up the banner. For instance, in Baton Rouge, there is a, a young man by the name of Harvey Lexing, who is already a mature blues player, and he and his brother, they already have rec records out. I think they are record for a company out of Jackson, Mississippi called Malico. There's another a blues uh, player uh, who graduated from Southern University. His name is Freddie Love. His real name is uh, Frederick Savoy, but his stage name is Freddie Love. He comes from down on Bayou Tesh in St. Martinsville. And he's really a fantastic blues uh, player and singer. And, of course, Tabby Thomas uh, out of Baton Rouge, who was functioning when I was in school at Southern University, uh, is being highly received around the world. And he has a young son who plays guitar who's doing very well uh, in the blues tradition. 
Uh, also, um, one of the things that has always gone gone on, uh, the, the, the question that you ask is sort of indicative of the problem that we always have uh, in generic black music, uh, where you have to realize that people like Aretha Franklin, Earth, Wind, and Fire, um, Lou Rawls, uh, Joe Williams, they are blues singers. And they are actually coming from the same uh, tributaries that uh, people like Ma Rainey, uh, Muddy Waters, uh, and of course, the, just the other day, the Louisiana Music Commission gave uh, an award to Gatemouth Brown, who received the first Emmy in Louisiana history, uh, or Grammy, I think it was, for his uh, song. And Gatemouth Brown um, is a living example of what you can do with uh, modern-day blues continuing to evolve and that is continuing to be marketable in the contemporary sense and having elements of jazz. In fact, that's one of the bands where um, many of my students have an opportunity to perform. Then uh, in the B.B. King band, where uh, one of my former students, uh, Herman Jackson, and also a guy by the name of Walter Perry and uh, Raymond Harris from New Roads, Walter's from Alexandria, they paid that apprenticeship in the B.B. King band. And so they carry on uh, carrying on that legacy. Well, that's and um, so it's not, it's not lost. And also in, in England, uh, as you know, the um, great economic phenomenon of the Beatles uh, was based on Louisiana music. Uh, a number of years ago, I met an, an actress and a lady who uh, is a great blues singer. Her name is May Mercer. Uh, I didn't know that at the time. Uh, I'll make you know who she is. She starred in a Clint Eastwood movie. She was the black lady with the, the, the pitchfork when the Confederate uh, soldier came in the barn. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, she sings blues. She sounds like she's singing in the 1800s. Mm -hmm. right? well, Tell me uh, something else. Yes. Mm -hmm. What is the essential difference between jazz and blues? Well, uh, the essential difference in jazz and the blues um, lies in the amount of improvisation that takes place. Jazz uh, primarily sets a stage for longer improvisation uh, in the black aesthetic tradition. Um, both of them are part of the larger generic black music. Uh, what is interesting about it, I think the historian Martin Williams said that he found it interesting that jazz, and I could apply this to blues, was becoming African. And um, I sort of interpret that to mean that over the years, uh, as various forms and expressions or uh, expressions of oppression is lifted off of uh, African Americans in the United States, that they have more self-expression coming from deeper levels of self, and that the carryovers from the previous genetic lines, right, are becoming more obvious. And that's one of the reasons why uh, a music like disco, musics like reggae, uh, which are, could be fitted into blues genres, uh, music, there's a new music called Jonkano that's coming from the Bahamas, okay? And then, of course, the, the kind of music that Horace Silver, uh, Stanley Turrentine, Cannonball Adderley, and I used to play in Ray Charles's band. It was a gas every night <laughs> to hear the blues like that. And uh, another thing that, um, that is not commonly known, but uh, country and Western music actually evolved from the same black tradition. Uh, the, uh, you get an inkling of it in, in Roots when the, um, the fiddler was under the tree. It was sort of a carryover like the old Greek civilization where the slaves made the music and it wasn't uh, commensurate with being free to stoop low enough to make music and things you know, like that. So would you say the jazz evolved from blues? Well, uh, no, there's a concomitancy there. Uh, the blues was a natural evolution from work songs and shouts. But the work songs and shouts 
differed from the blues in text and in intent because the work songs and the shouts were about being in a collective situation where, say like even today, you can experience work songs and shouts in a situation like at Angola where you have uh, somebody boss over the, the prisons, right? Uh, whereas the blues um, represents a time when an individual has time to attune to self and can observe the environment. I think it was mentioned that certain subjects that had to do with sadness and, uh, well, the commentaries. Uh, but all of the commentaries uh, are not sad and are not negative. For instance, Eddie Harris. Why don't you give uh, us, yes. for instance, on the keyboard? How would that oh, okay. Be? Well, um, for this particular uh, piece here uh, is like that. Uh, I call it music came. Okay. And uh, I call it a philosophical commentary, but it's really just the blues. But it doesn't fit exactly into that limited definition. If you want to go off into a little jazz too, that's fine. Well, I guess it would combine both of them. It's like music came. Music came way down deep in the depths of sorrow. The music came. Slavery didn't make no difference. Slavery didn't make no difference. Cause way down deep in the depths of sorrow. Far from the shores of my native land, never had family hold my hand. However, wherever I may be, the universe provides for me. Vice from the cosmos set me free when music came. particular song um, has in it, if you wanted to uh, analyze it musicologically, um, what we call a pentatonic scale. And the way that it's set, it carries the sound of the kora, which is an African instrument uh, with 19 strings. It's the only instrument that we can put our hands on now, uh, aside from uh, a synthesizer or a computerized instrument that closely comes to the Pythagorean theory of tones, which is broader than just a chromatic scale. It has 19 tones in it, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, this particular sound, the pentatonic, when you do it from here, is the sound of the blues. Mm -hmm. You bend a few, you know. And then it carries the message, um, which was a 60s message. This was written in the 60s, uh, when uh, the black consciousness was really uh, vibrant in the United States in that particular form. And it was making a statement uh, about universal values in terms of music coming in a situation that was negative. Tell me this. Um, how much influence do you think black, black jazz musicians have had on jazz? <laughs> All of it. There are no other influences. Okay. Uh, the books um, have been written basically by non-black uh, critics. Uh, there's a sociological uh, reason for that. Uh, the entrepreneurial base in the Western world is non-black, and so the people who had access uh, to uh, ways of disseminating through marketing, what have you, uh, it's just only recently that uh, blacks have begun to write books about their own experience. So uh, that's, that's uh, evident in the way that jazz is defined as uh, African rhythms. With, uh, Why don't you give us an example of some jazz? Well, well um, 
what I just played was jazz, but if I translate it, I'll give you another example of uh, what you would call an Irvin blues, say if um, the way that Charlie Parker would play. Okay. Somebody like Eddie Harris uh, writes songs in the modern vernacular like that. Like I have a song that's in the modern v vernacular. It's talking about a situation where all of us have nemesis on our jobs. So um, it, uh, my song, uh, Eddie Harris, would just to take that, he would be saying, I went to the supermarket, y'all. The lady didn't want to give me no change, but it didn't matter. I went to the other side of the store and I found a lady who gave me what I needed. So you see, the blues doesn't have to be. You know, that was extemporaneous. And of course, that's a whole thing. And uh, what I'm saying is that uh, you, can, you can actually go all the way to Africa and you can find um, a vortex for that type of extemporaneous or extemporaneous uh, creativity. Okay. Uh, it's a big thing in the Bahamas, you know, like that. Tell me, what does the future hold for jazz? Well, um, the future holds the young people now, whatever they decide to do, and of course, uh, the entrepreneurs. Uh, but uh, the, the development of jazz has always been able to surmount the short, uh, the short vision of the entrepreneurs. Uh, I think we, we could say that uh, the great jazz musicians have never been supported by the most uh, mature entrepreneurs. Is classical jazz part of the new frontier? Well, uh, all jazz that has manifested uh, in the, the, the line, the continuum, is classical, meaning uh, standing the test of time. In fact, uh, many of us consider jazz America's classical music. And the, uh, the question about whether jazz is black or whatever, well, jazz is American, but the progenitors are black, and other people are playing it very well, but the people who are still, uh, at this moment, adding to the language and expanding it for Americans are black. Thank you so much for being with us today, Alvin. We really My appreciated pleasure. it. There will be a lot of jazz musicians on hand at the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival, which begins April 29th through May 8th. There will also be uh, blues, gospel, and Cajun songs. To give you uh, any idea of some of the Cajun music that we have, you can expect to hear at the festivals. Here's the Bouget, I'm sorry, the Bouget Berrigan Band and his father Albert.
You know, Genevieve, in addition to all the music, there will be a lot of crafts and tons of food on hand for everyone. Again, the dates for the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival, it runs from April 29th through May the 8th. And the River City Blues Festival in Baton Rouge will take place Sunday, April 24th from 1 to 7 p.m. at the Old State Capitol. Well, I've had a lot of fun here today. How about you? I really have too, Rob. And I'd like to take time now to thank our guests, Alvin Batiste, Henry Gray, and Silas Hogan for being with us today. Next week on Folks, our program will focus on four women who as children integrated the public school system in New Orleans 23 years ago. As we sign off, here's more music from Henry Gray and Whispering Smith. Bye-bye. Funding for the production of Folks is provided in part by the Friends of LPB.